It's our first ever live counterattack. We're here at Newport Beach. We're coming up next. <laughs> Hi everyone, Greg Meskel here. Thanks for joining us on the Counterattack. As you might have gathered, we're not in the studio this week. We're here on location for our first ever live episode in Newport Beach, California, the site of the 2015 Holiday Cup here at the home of the Sea Kings and the Sea Queens, Corona Del Mar High School. Thanks for joining us on a Wednesday afternoon. Night one of the Holiday Cup in the books last night, a win for Team USA. They came out in strong fashion, defeating Italy, and before that, it was a close one. Spain able to pick up a one-goal win over the Netherlands. More action tonight. Team USA in a rematch of the World Championship final will meet the Netherlands. That game will take place at 7.30 p.m. You can watch it right here live on USA Water Polo TV, or you can come out and cheer on Team USA. Tickets available at the door. And while we're talking tickets and games, want to let you know that tomorrow night, a special night here in Newport Beach, it'll be a Team USA doubleheader. Rarely happens where both teams get together. The USA women, they'll play at 6.30 and then the USA men will follow at 8 o'clock. If you're a student, a high school student or younger, just bring your student ID, $10 admission at the door to see both the USA men and women in action. It should be a great night of water polo. But for right now, we're focusing on the action with the USA women. It's been a busy time for Team USA. They're in the midst of the Holiday Cup, as we told you, but they also played the Netherlands this past Sunday. Let's take a look at some highlights here. This was what happened in Manhattan Beach at Miracosta High School. Take a look at the highlights. This was a strong game for Team USA. They got off to a great start. Kathy Craig kind of doesn't get a chance to get out on the counter all that often, but she puts this one away, and she's able to connect there for a goal. Team USA was rolling early on. Mackenzie Fisher added another one. This was in front of a nice crowd here at Miracosta High School in Manhattan Beach. The team will occasionally work out there. The Dutch trying to rally here, able to beat Ashley Johnson as they move the ball into the offensive end. Funny moment happened later in this game that we'll get to in just a couple of minutes as the Netherlands works on their offensive attack. Seven inch with a beautiful backhand. We'll see her tonight. So we'll get a rematch of this game right here at the Holiday Cup. And you'll watch it live on USA Water Polo TV. There's Maddie Musselman. We'll talk to her live in just a couple of minutes right here at CDM. She puts the goal away for Team USA, and they were cruising. They had built a large lead, and check this out. Now Seagulls come out of the blue. I've never seen that in a game before. It was pretty hysterical. They came in. They left in a hurry. Meanwhile, Team USA puts this one away, and they win it by two goals. Afterwards, we caught up with Team USA's Kelly Gilchrist on the victory. Yeah, we had seven, seven games, now six here at home, which is always a great opportunity. And, you know, in any tournament, we always want to get better each every game, each and every uh, quarter. So this was a great start. Of course, there were some places we want to work on, and there were some good, some bad, like any game. But it was definitely a good starting point to the p upcoming week at Holiday Cup. Um, based off of the World Championships, and now you're playing them again, this is becoming a little bit of a familiar opponent here in some big games. What do they do so well that makes it a good contest? Um, you know, they, they fight, and they have tons of people that can go into a set, and they have, you know, some speed and great shot blocking. So they're always a challenge and always a great opponent, and it's a cool little rivalry we have um, we have with them and looking forward to a couple more games against them coming now, up in CDM. A nice week of water polo in kind of your hometown area. Um, what's that going to be like to play really in front of your home fans, in front um, of the team's home fans? Yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, any time to play in the States is awesome, no matter where, what state. But, of course, uh, playing at CDM is even better, a little arch enemy in high school. So, But it'll be great to be so close to Newport and have everyone come out and support. And uh, last thing, what does that mean to the group when you have a home game where you can have people come out and really cheer you on? How does that motivate you and the team? Um, individually, you know, I just want to play well in front of my home crowd. But, I mean, as a team, I think we understand how many, not that many opportunities we have to play at home. And we really are taking these six games to heart. And we want to show that we can play great water polo in front of our home crowd. So we're definitely looking forward to it. So Thank you, Kelly Gilchrist, for your time. I don't think she realized until now she was almost taken out by a rolling stack of lap lanes right there. And we appreciate her talking to us after the big win. More Team USA news. Two athletes from Team USA were in Philadelphia last week for the Team USA Awards. Good luck here at KK Clark and Maggie Steffens. And they have to hang out with recording artist Andre Day as well. This is at the Team USA Awards where 
our women's national team was a finalist for Olympic Team of the Year. They unfortunately didn't win, falling to the women's soccer team, but Maggie Steffens did get a chance to talk with NBC in Philadelphia about water polo. women that I've met recently, Tatiana McFadden, one of the Paralympians who's nominated tonight, an amazing background story. Um, just people who have really gone for their dream and in, in, in a different way than I have. And so it's really cool to be surrounded by people. Like and real quickly for 2016, uh, yes. we favored to win the gold. Let's go, Team USA. That's what I'm talking about. Way. There you go. Uh, to, uh, today's show, uh, the today's show is Natalie Morales is hosting tonight's Team USA Awards presented by Dow. Best of the year ceremony this evening at the University of Pennsylvania's Houston Hall. You can watch it on December 27th from 3 to 4 p.m. on NBC Sports Network. Lisa and Maggie, thank you very much for coming in. Thank Good you. luck to you in Rio. Thank you. Great stuff there in Philadelphia for Team USA. Maggie Steffens and KK Clark. We got a commercial break on the way. Coming up next, Maddie Musselman joins us right here poolside as her old high school team goes through practice. It's the counterattack live. <laughs> And we're back here, poolside, Corona Del Mar High School, joined by Maddie Musselman. And Maddie, thanks for stopping by today. No problem. <laughs> You're making history here. You're the first live counterattack. I can tell you're very excited. I am very excited. <laughs> So Maddie, this is a this is a pool you're very familiar with. You went to high school here. Mm -hmm. When you walk on this pool deck, what are some memories that come back to you? Um, I mean, this is where I grew up playing water polo ever since I was, you know, the age of eight. So it's kind of cool to come back and see just the growth of the program overall, and all the p different people who've been through the program with me, and who've come back and coached. You know, you got, you know, Tamu and I coming back to coach 12 and unders, and just Olympians in general. It's been a very inspiring program. You got. Kelly Rulon helping with the 12 and unders. And then you got like Chris Oding and John Mann who've just impacted the water polo world in general. So it's been really inspiring to go through this, you know, come back on the pool deck and remember all of those little things. Is there a, a game or a competition that stands <coughs> out when you think about playing for CDM? Um, I always remember the Battle of the Bays, um, you know, the big games. I think I had two at this pool. Um, and just the rivalry between CDM and Newport has always been fun to be a part of. and. Just the support from your family and friends to come out and watch that rivalry has been really fun and memorable as well. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, coming up again this Friday, yeah. and it's going to be in between your Holiday Cup games. Why is that always such a big game? Why does the community get so excited for it? Um, I mean, you have all your friends and family that live in this community, so all you get to go up against not only your friends, and then you also get to compete with your friends. So that always brings you know a big game and. I don't know, it's always fun to, you know, play the people that are across the bay, you know. It's just always been like that, so, sure. I mean, that rivalry is always fun to get up for. Um, this, this would be a game that normally you'd be playing in if you were playing high school water polo. I know we talked about this in the past, but was it last spring you decided to withdraw from CDM? You're doing online schooling so you can focus on training with Team USA. Um, that's not a, a thing everyone would be up for. That's, a, that, that's obviously a big life change. Mm -hmm. Why was that the right thing for you to do? 
Um, I mean, it's my dream to go to the Olympics, and you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, obviously, academics comes first, um, so it was just trying to make that possible in order to pursue, you know, my water polo career as well. So I'm still doing school online um, and able to go to practice and still dream big while I'm doing school at the same time. So um, just having that flow and being able to time manage myself um, while playing water polo at the same time. And it sounds like it's important. We want to let everyone know you're not dropping out of school. You're no. still you're still doing still, school. Yeah. Have you have you gotten that from people where they think that you're? Uh, thank you for catching this, by the way. Um, <laughs> where they where they think that you're just out of school and you're kind of hanging out watching like yeah, I mean Netflix all day and then playing <laughs> water polo. Some people do. I mean, some yeah. people are like, oh, what are you doing? And you know, like, what do you do in your free time? I'm like, well, I don't really have that much free time. I mean, I'm either playing water polo or, you know, learning, and it's been fun. So I just have to explain it to them a sure, little bit. Sure, sure. Uh, I know the schedule for the women's water polo team is a hectic one. It's a mm -hmm. lot of training. The average person at home, maybe they're not familiar with what you do day to day. <laughs> How does it compare, if you think back to your high school, your club days, to what it's like to train and just be really a water polo player every day? Um, I mean, usually in high school, you have one to two practices a day for maybe two hours. But, you know, at this level, it, you know, it really shifts to a lot more spending time as a team and getting to know each other inside and out of the water. Um, you know, you got you got weights and strength and conditioning in the morning. You got swimming in right after that. And then in the afternoon, you do all water polo or video. And there's a lot more engagement, I would say, um, in connecting with your team and your coaches. Um, and just a lot more spending time together, which, you know, impacts our team in such a positive way. What has it been like for you? You're one of the younger players on the team. You and Aria Fisher probably in that same, Mackenzie, probably that same age range. Some of your teammates are several years older than you. How, has, how, how have you adjusted to spending a lot of time with these people that normally you probably wouldn't hang out with all that much? Um, it's been really fun, actually. You know, I get to spend a lot of time with a lot of the older ones all the time, and um, it's really eye-opening, you know, they have all the experience at, the cl at this international level and, you know, just to learn from them every day and on a daily basis, um, you know, who they are, what they like to do. You know, it's a lot different than, you know, high school life. Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, it's fun to kind of see their side of, you know, what they've gone through. You know, they've experienced everything I have. So, you know, it's nice to get what they did in, at high school or through college and just their experience. Um, it's so fun to learn from them and be able to play with them every day. And it's, it's interesting what you're doing. It's a team sport. Mm -hmm. I think when people think about someone your age going for the Olympics, they think uh, gymnastics, tennis, some of the individual sports, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you're a water polo player. You're part of a team. You're only 17 years old. I think back to when I was 17. I think I was, like, into, like, does anyone want to go to, like, Wendy's maybe? Like, I'm looking to go to a fast food place, hang out at the mall. <laughs> you're, like, trying to become an Olympian. Does that, yeah. does that ever kind of blow your mind a little bit, what you're working on at such a young age? Um. I mean, it's weird that it came this fast. You know, I didn't expect it to be, you know, be given this opportunity at such a young age. But since it did come, I, you know, I'm taking it as, you know, a great learning experience and learning from it every day. I mean, it is kind of weird to think like, oh, I'm not, you know, at a high school game or, you know, I don't get to go to all the football games. But I mean, it's the little things that I get to miss. But, you know, I can, everyone else is doing it as well. So. Sure, sure. Has there been a part of this that's been like frustrating for you, like where you wish you were just a regular high school kid? Not really. I no. mean, I went to three years of high school, so sure. I didn't really miss too much. Yeah, and yeah. I've been to a lot of dances, so it's not, you know, it's kind of nice, actually, to not have to worry <laughs> about all the high school things. That seems like the, like, you bring up the dance. I feel like that's the most, like, cliche thing someone would ask you, like, you're going to miss your prom. Yeah, and, and never, they do ask that. They're like, oh, what do you think about prom? I'm like, well, personally, I'm not a very big fan of, like, doing all of that, like, dancing and sure, stuff. Sure. So, I mean... I don't mind missing it. Yeah. So yeah. you found like the ultimate excuse to get out of prom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, seem oh I have practice. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I always have practice. <laughs> Maddie Musman will not come to your dance, everyone. <laughs> uh, let me talk to you about you as a water polo player. If someone was watching you in the water, kind of give us a scouting report. Like, what do you, what do you do well at water polo? Um, I feel like I'm a very defensive, mobile kind of player. Um, you know, I like to create not only for myself on offense, but create for my teammates and. I'm very kind of agile in the water. I've been told I have a very pretty stroke. Sometimes okay. it's not very aggressive when, I, when it needs to be, but um, and I kind of move well in the water, so it can be positive on the offensive side and on the defensive side. I've heard some coaches talk about your lob shot. They say it's a very oh. strong <laughs> lob shot. Is that something that you have worked on? How have you kind of developed that part of your game? Um, I mean, everyone kind of has a unique kind of shot, and I've tried to kind of develop mine over time, and um, the lob is – something that I grew to love. <laughs> um, so it throws people off a little bit, and I've just been working on it ever since the beginning of summer a little bit. And, 
you know, it's been working, so. Uh, you have a, a dad that played professional sports. You have an athletic family. Your sisters play water polo. I think one of them maybe is in the pool here <laughs> right now. Um, talking about your dad, a professional baseball player, what has he told you about kind of entering this stage of, of high-profile athletics? You know, if you are to make the Olympics, that'll be as big as it gets for water polo. A lot of uh, focus on you and on the team. Does he talk to you at all about that, about how to kind of handle these moments? Um, I mean, he just says enjoy every moment that you have um, at this level because, you know, in a moment it can be taken away. And, you know, just um, I would – he supports me in everything that I do, and sure. he knows that no matter what happens, that everything that you learned is – can be applied to life so I think just knowing that in practice I can learn a little bit thing that I can apply to life as well and he just supports me and I think that's all that he thinks that I want to have fun the whole time and that's what it's all about is having fun and loving what you do cool cool all right well we'll wrap up really soon here I know you're dying to end this interview <laughs> um, let me just ask you about next year mm -hmm. Adam Kikorian none of the coaches like to look that far ahead to have to qualify yeah. to become an Olympian <coughs> if it all works out you qualify you become an Olympian have you thought about that moment at all what it'll be like to be named whether it's a meeting with the coach or you see your name on a list that moment of when you'd be told you're going to the Olympics um I mean I visualized it I mean you know a big part of this you know being able to make it every day is visualizing you know that moment and I've had a couple visualizations but I wouldn't say I have exactly know what it feels like because sure. I've never experienced it, but I'm excited for you know what the future holds, um, whether I make it or not. I know that I'll try again, you know, for 2020, and um, I'm just excited to even be in this process and with this team and just continue to learn about life and about water polo. So we're about to show a video here, not of you, but of your teammates. This is mm -hmm. all of their holiday videos where they were doing competitive <laughs> gift wrapping, building gingerbread houses. You didn't take part in this, but I know Coach no. showed this video to some of you guys. Yeah. What did you think of this when you watch your teammates <laughs> acting all crazy talking about the holidays? I mean, it just shows everyone's unique personality. Everyone's a little bit different. You yes, know, they you are. got, <laughs> you know, Ashley Grossman, who's just super funny. And you got Sammy, who's just herself all the time. You got Cody, who's a little bit more composed. You know, everyone's just a little bit different. And it's cool to kind of see it all like when you ask them to sing a song you know i've never heard them sing before so it's good to see how, you know just the unique personalities come out when you ask them to do things like that i won't ask you to sing i'll ask you one holiday question what's the gift you always wanted that you never got was there was something for the holidays you always asked for that you were never given um i would say a puppy but since everyone already said that yeah um I've anything i mean it, it's different every year i mean you always want a dog for Christmas, and yeah. you never actually get it for Christmas, but, yeah, puppy. Puppy it is, everyone. These team athletes <laughs> want puppies. <laughs> Maddie Musselman, thanks so much for taking the time no today. Good luck tonight Thank in the you. Holiday Cup. And enjoy some of her teammates uh, acting up here in their holiday videos. <laughs>
if I have too much wrapping paper, you're supposed to double fold it, and I did not do that at all. And then I knew I was running out of time, so I just had to kind of crumple this side. This side looks all right with this a little bit of puffy excess paper, but um, yeah, not my best job. <laughs> Done. Uh, would you be happy to receive that gift? Um, if I knew that it was wrapped in 30 seconds. Definitely. But like, that's a pretty good present. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Now we don our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> so, you've got your hard-earned money, but you're not sure where to put it. Well, one of the best things that you can do is put it into a credit union. Credit unions are like banks, only better. They offer higher rates of return, lower fees, and are safe and secure. And because they're not for profit, they're all about putting the people first. With credit unions, you're not just another face in the crowd, you're a member. And credit unions are member-owned and member-operated. Take control of your finances. Visit or contact Sea Air Federal Credit Union to find out all of the great reasons why you should join. And here we are. Welcome back and sitting right down, right on time. Head coach here for CDM, Kevin Ricks. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Doing all right. Thanks for taking a moment here away from practice going on right in front of us. Um, first up, I want to ask you about, about this job and about the CDM program and kind of your thoughts about taking over this team. Well, it's a... Uh the program itself has been uh, just a powerhouse since uh, women's water polo started in 97 as a CIF sport. Uh, it's an honor to get to get a chance to, to lead this group and uh, to uh, kind of be the next next person, the next caretaker of the program. So it's uh, it's thrilling. Uh, we got a great group of girls and they've been working really hard and um, I've been really impressed. It's interesting and I and I don't want to compare all that much to college football, but this, this job opening feels to me like one of those prestigious jobs that comes up in girls' high school water polo in this area. So it's a job that a lot of people, I'm sure, would be interested in. You look at the banner that I'm sure you stare at every day now when you come in with yeah. all these legendary coaches, Ted Newland, Aaron Cheney, John Vargas. What's, what's the, and obviously these boys and girls differ on who, on who those uh, teams that those gentlemen coached, but when you come here every day, what's kind of the expectations to, to, to be a great team since you are leading CDM? Yeah. Uh, you know, Coach Coach Cheney and and Coach Vargas and and all those coaches you mentioned just established a great tradition of of how we how we prepare to play and how we conduct ourselves in the pool and uh, the the skills that we practice and the intensity and uh, I was as you know when I walked on the pool deck it's 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 impressive to see the the pride the girls have in the program and how willing they are to uh, work really hard, you know, in the weight room and in the off season and year round to be great water polo players. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and I feel like it's something that we have to, uh, we respect the tradition by showing up every day and putting the work in and, and doing it the right way. Coming up this Friday, one of the big games on your schedule, maybe the biggest game outside of playoffs, postseason stuff like that, the Battle of the Bay, Newport Harbor. You're you're coming into this um, not as an outsider. I'm sure you're well well aware of the game and its importance. But yeah. in your mind, in your time here thus far, why is it so important? Why does it get people so fired up? Why will these bleachers likely be filled on Friday? Well, I just think it's it comes from the fact that uh, Coach Barnett and Coach Newland and Coach Vargas, the coaches here, established two really terrific water polo programs that are within a couple miles of each other. 
And uh, there's certainly a lot of pride in both programs. And, and I know, you know, I, I got a chance to watch the boys game this year and, and their game last year and the girls game last year. And the, the teams just, they show up and they play hard. And it's, it's you know, bragging rights for the city of Newport Beach and, and in this community that's produced such uh, tremendous water polo talent, aquatic talent, uh, it's a it's a game that kind of allows you to kind of showcase the future of the sport in some in some ways, sure. and it's uh, it's you know it's just a great atmosphere. The boys' game this year over at Newport was was just a terrific atmosphere, and um, you know standing room only. It was it was just a great great environment. It's a it's a really exciting thing to be a part of, and it's it's going to be a blast. It feels like one of those games where no matter how high or low your team is rated or ranked or the expectations, wherever they might be, when you get together, it's going to be a good game. Yeah, I think I think last year it was they, they ended up playing each other three or four times, and it was a one-goal game. Um, I had I had a, an alumni parent come up to me just yesterday and go, you know, my favorite moment was, was Alex Musselman scoring a, a, a full-court shot, you know, and I think that was four or five years ago. <laughs> so I think, you know, there's, there's history there, and, and people come out, whether it's the parents, former parents and alumni and in the community, they come out to kind of as a, you know, an annual traditional thing, almost like an alumni game where they come to see, see the game played. We're talking here with Kevin Ricks, head coach of CDM, Battle of the Bay coming up. We'll webcast the game live here on USA Water Polo TV. Let's talk a little bit about your team. And I know you just get the season started. Yeah. Who, who are some people that you look to, some of your leaderships, people you're excited to coach in the water this year? Yeah, our, our, our two captains are uh, both seniors, Heidi Rittner and uh, Bridget Storm. Sorry. <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, and, and both of them were, were starters for the team last year. Um, they're a part of the USA Water Polo ODP program. Yep. Um, Heidi's, Heidi's currently, I think, the goalkeeper for the youth team, and, and both of them are committed to playing w water polo in college, and they just have uh, great leadership skills um, and a work ethic that's, you know, second to none. And I've also been impressed with, um, you know, uh, just their, their competitive. You know, they want to go out and they want to, you know, Heidi wants to stop every shot, and... Uh, you know, Bridget's the same thing. She wants to get position. She wants the ball. She wants to score and, and take on that responsibility for our team. We've touched a little bit on the history of the program, the coaches, the athletes that have come through here. You're at a regular practice today, and you see some of the alums of this program. Matty Musselman here, who's a world champion with the women's team, John Mann, who we'll talk to in a couple of minutes, an Olympian. What does that do for the athletes in the water? Can you use any of that when you're coaching them and saying, look at, look at these people. This is where you can go? Yeah, we were, we, you know, just this fall, uh, Tamua, who's a former national team Olympic gold medalist, she's she's been helping out with the uh, 12 and under program, and uh, it's a unique situation where you can have this role model standing there in front of the girls saying, "Look, I I did what you're doing, and I was able to reach this level, and I set these goals, and I was able to accomplish them, and and here's how I did that, and here's some of the." challenges and some of the adversity I faced along the way and how I handled that and that's just a really unique special um, thing that that you don't always have and uh, you know uh, during the summer we have alumni that come back and they they train with us and and uh, so it's an opportunity for us to you know now you know take our skills and kind of test them against what are the girls in college do what does that look like how does that feel how to how much how much more do I have to improve to feel like I'm ready to make that next step? And uh, it, it's great having that kind of support. And I think, you know, I think one, I recall talking with Coach Cheney, and one of the things he really emphasized was just as, as alumni graduate, that they have, a, they have a responsibility to the program to come back and, and, and support us and make us better and help us out and, and to, you know, the, the girls that return, the women that return uh, for the alumni game and just show up, you know, to, to help out and support uh, is a huge, huge, you know, kind of secret to success. Sure, sure. Well, Kevin Rix, thanks for your time. Appreciate you so much joining us here. Yeah. Battle of the Bay coming up for CDM this Friday. They'll take on Newport Harbor JV and Varsity. 
Thank you for your time. Now Absolutely. we'll take you to some images here from Japan when the men's national team visited Tokyo just moments ago. And what we're looking at now, Team USA in Tokyo. Last week this was for an exhibition match against the Japanese national team, a 7-6 winner. And that woman, lower left, that's the U.S. ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy, Team USA, getting the opportunity to meet her and also some other dignitaries from Team USA and from Team Japan. They all got together. Uh, very, very fun, fun stuff here for the national team. And uh, speaking of men's national team here, coming up just in a moment, we're going to be joined by John Mann and a center for Team USA. John, in these pictures right now joining us, John, how are you doing? Good. good Thanks to see for you. stopping by. It's good to be here. Welcome back to the old uh, stomping grounds. Newport's yeah. favorite son is home. It's nice to do an interview <laughs> looking out at my uh, my old alma mater, my old pool. There, there's a practice going on right now. Does this give you flashbacks to your time in the pool? Absolutely. I'm hearing the drums in the background from the band, and <laughs> it's great. Uh, John, we had, we just had Maddie Musselman on, who was here a little bit more recently than you, but similar question that I asked her. When you step on this pool deck, outside of training, what kind of memory comes back to you when you think about your time here? Oh, I, uh, I have just great memories being here, and uh, it's where I learned to love the game. So for me, it's, the, it's my favorite pool in the world and uh, the best place to be. And you're going to be playing in it Thursday night right here against Croatia, 8 o'clock. As we mentioned earlier on, if you're a student, high school ID, and younger, $10 admission at the door. No reason to not come out and cheer on John and Team USA. What is that going to be like? Croatia, always one of the best. How do you gear up for a program like that? Um, right now we're in a little bit different competitive phases than they are. Uh, they have European Championships coming up, which is one of the qualifiers for the teams who haven't qualified yet uh, for the Olympic Games. Luckily we've qualified, we took care of our, our uh, job there. And so right now it's kind of preparation, we're working on some things and uh, you know, giving some young guys some experience and a lot of good, a lot of good things come from this, but obviously they're, they're in preparation mode right now and they have a big tournament coming up in the next few weeks. So. Uh, It'll be good. So sometimes in these events, you'll get a team that is maybe not preparing for anything. It's kind of a light travel yeah. mode. They're training, maybe a little bit of a break. This is not the case. You're saying we're going to get Croatia at their very top level. Yeah, we, I, I believe that the, the Croatian team will be playing, at, you know, all cylinders going. And, uh, you know, they're trying to win. European championships is a huge deal for them. And, uh, you know, they're going to approach it, you know, like a little mini Olympic Games for the, uh, for the you know, European continent. And, uh you know, they're, they're going to be firing, so it'll be good for us. It'll be great exposure for us to train uh, and prepare our training for Rio, starting with this. We just showed, showed some photos of uh, you and the team in Japan. Uh, kind of a quick trip. You go over there, train for a few days, play one game, which, from what I'm told, big crowd, big big event there in Tokyo as they gear up for their qualification attempt. What, did, what was your takeaway of that trip and what all went down there? I think it was a great trip. It was so fast, such a quick trip. You know, we uh, we flew in, played a couple games, flew right out. Um, it was very cool to see the 2020 pool, and that's where we played at. So the the Tokyo Games pool, uh, you know, we got to experience that firsthand, and you know, they had a, a huge crowd. You know, I don't know the exact number, but it looked to me about 3,500, at least 4,500 in that range. Anytime you can get in front of that many fans, uh, I know some of the young guys. We had a a high school guy out with us, and he definitely had never played in a crowd that big before. <laughs> yeah. You know, in Serbia, that was pretty normal for me. Um, but, you know, it's always good to get the guys in front of big crowds and get a lot of energy going and, and you know, see what they do with it and grow from it. And so it was a great cultural experience as well. A lot of great food. Uh, we did the fish market, got up real early before we left. Uh, we had about eight hours off, so we took a little, t little sightseeing tour, took some of the young guys with me and explored a little bit of Tokyo. So excellent. Yeah, it was so a great trip. Add, a, add another stamp to your passport there. Absolutely. Yeah. Got to meet Ambassador uh, Carolyn Kennedy, which is very cool. Anytime you can meet a Kennedy, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was a fantastic experience. And uh, yeah, it was a great trip. Let's talk a little bit about you and, and kind of your, your water polo career over the last couple of years. You have. Uh, kind of grown into a leader on this team. You're you're often the captain in the event that uh, Tony Acevedo is not around. Whereas we look back to 2012, and not that you were one of the young players, but it was it was a very established group. You were the backup center in some cases. What has that kind of growth been like for you over the last three years where now Coach Adovacic looks to you to kind of lead the group in many cases? Uh, it's a great responsibility. Uh, something I take a lot of pride in and 
uh, you know, it's extra motivation every day uh, to do things the right way, to uh, try to lead by example as much as I can. And, um, you know, it helps me grow uh, every day as a, as a player and as a man. So, um, as a John man? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's really, it's been a great thing for me. And uh, Coach Dan's been a great thing for me. And with him, I've grown a lot as a player, you know, and it's, in a small amount of time with him, I've grown, you know, I believe leaps and bounds and um, just continued from where I was developing, you know, right before the Olympics and into now. And, you know, I couldn't be happier with, you know, being a leader on the team and, and being somebody that the guys look to. I take great pride in that. I know we have a lot of high school coaches, athletes that watch players that just want to get better at water polo. You obviously to to make this jump and to develop and grow, you have to be receptive to coaching. How much of that was you kind of opening yourself up and saying, "Look, how can you how can you help me get better?" Well, I think if you look at great athletes, um, they realize that you know perfection is not always attainable. Um, you can have glimpses, you can have moments uh, of it, but it's uh, it's about chasing that. And um, you know, I I try to approach training and uh, you know my interaction with my coaches is. You know, we're all on the same page. We're all trying to get better. You know, they're not coming from a place to just criticize me. They want me to be my best. I want to be my best. So, you know, in many ways, the criticism is a really good thing. And it's something that, you know, you can you can take in a wrong way, but, you know, if you if you choose to. But I, I think if you take it, you know, and you're receptive to it, you're just going to grow. So um, it's okay to be humble. It's okay to, you know, accept criticism because it's only going to help you. I think what's interesting about your career is that uh, it hasn't all been just one, you know, straight smooth ride. You didn't just easily walk onto an Olympic team. You had to really fight for your spot there. That can kind of get lost sometimes. You know, you you become an Olympian and you did in 2012, and then people know you as John Man Olympian. Now you're trying to make it two times in a row. But uh, you you went through some ups and downs where you where you had this great college career, at Cal. Right? You win everything you'd want to win. You win the Katina Award. You win an NCAA championship. And then it doesn't just immediately translate into an Olympian for you. You yeah. were, I know, right right on the brink of some big teams and didn't and didn't make it. And then you stuck with it. And then you ended up getting where you wanted to go. For the athlete that maybe got cut or didn't make the team, whether it's club or high school, how'd you, how'd you fight through that? What, what kept you playing water polo when maybe another person might say, you know what, if they don't want me, forget it? Well, I just had a belief that inside of me and, and my abilities, I was able to do, you know, this. This was a realistic dream. Um, but, you know, you just have to look in the mirror when you have those kind of uh, defeats and those, you know, those kind of just terrible moments where, you know, you, you get cut or, you, you know, you, your heart breaks because it's your, it's your life. But, uh, you know, I just looked, in this, looked at myself in the mirror and was honest with myself and what do I need to do and... Uh, you know, I had to make a choice whether I was going to be an Olympian or I wasn't, and uh, I made that choice that I was going to be. So, when you get that moment when you're kind of in that tunnel or that staging area before you walk out for lineups, whether it's the Olympics or World Championships, does that kind of I don't know the right feeling, the way to describe it, but does something kind of come over you with like, yeah, you know, like I kind of got where I wanted to go. Not that you've won what you wanted to win, yeah, but you're but you're where you want to be. Uh, definitely. I mean, I I think walking through the the tunnel at the Olympic, you know, opening ceremonies and, you know, seeing people. I have this video. I have this kind of, like, handy cam with me, and sometimes I watch it when I'm, you know, just, you know, in a, in a funk or in training funk. And just to see that and realize that I, I've seen my dream come true and, you know, now my dream's a gold medal. Uh, you know, I always wanted a gold medal. Uh, I wanted it last time. It didn't work out, and that's one of the reasons I'm back again. You know, I, f I feel like that was a defeat for me, and, you know, so I'm committed to being better and, and getting that. Thursday evening will be a doubleheader, the women's team first, then the men's team. You obviously get a chance to see them play every now and again, the women at some of the larger events. They, I'm sure, have set a standard that the men's team aspires to reach, where you go into every event considered a favorite. When you watch them and the times you've seen them play, what do they do so well? Is it, is it, is it fun for you and the guys to kind of check out one of their games? Yeah, it's a great. It's great. Um, Actually, this last summer was the first time I was able to see the girls play in a while because a lot of times we won't have uh, events together. Sure. So we were fortunate to have Pan Ams and World Championships, so I got to go support some of their events and see them play. And, you know, it's always good. You see, uh, you know, the game is different, in my opinion, obviously, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of aspects that are very similar. And uh, I think they're a great team. They work tremendously hard, and, you know, you can see their discipline. 
and uh, I think that's a great lesson for anybody to watch. Uh, I think they're tremendously disciplined, and uh, you know you watch it in their counterattack defense. And uh, I, I remember you know being kind of in, you know in awe of that. I was like you know they're just committed as a group, as an entire unit. Whether Maddie, she's the youngest one, or everyone was on the same page. And I don't know if people realize how incredibly difficult that is to do as a team. So, you know, anytime I watch them, there's some fantastic things going on, and uh, it's, it's a joy to watch them. Succeed. We were just talking to uh, Maddie Musselman before, and she mentioned you and Chris Oding has some, has some greats to come out of here at CDM. When you watch her play, obviously she's still kind of getting started in her, in her international career, but it's got to be fun to watch a, a fellow kind of alum here do some great things. Absolutely, and uh, it's always fun to watch Maddie too. She's always going for it, and she's just kind of a little firecracker, a little spark plug, and uh, you know, and and uh, kind of has no fear. So, uh, anytime you watch a player just playing, just you can see it's just joy. You know, it's it's what she loves to do, and uh, anytime you see that, it's great. It makes other players remember why they love to play. It's it's uh, it's great to watch. Uh, we end every every counterattack with our social media send off where we kind of highlight the best in the world of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want to ask you about your social media. We've 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 had your Twitter account come up here on the screen, and uh, I know you're big on Instagram with one of the better names around Instaman. Yep. It really fits you well, being John Man. What do you enjoy about social media and about kind of just sharing your travels and your life with water polo fans? Well, I I don't know. I wish when I was younger I was able to see what the national team athletes were doing and. Uh, you know, the travels, I, I get to do some pretty amazing things and I'm very fortunate. So it's a great way for me to connect with, you know, fans, family, friends, everybody and uh, in the world and show them what, uh, how hard we work, how much we travel, the things we do on a day to day basis, how much we eat, how much we, you know, sleep or whatever it is. But, you know, it's uh, it's definitely something I, I've always liked. And uh, I think it's I think it's great. What, what is that experience like? And you know, you play a game, and the game's over, and you can open your phone up, and you know, maybe you have a couple of tweets at you, like, "Hey, Bear Man, you know, awesome that job." Was great. Or that was great. is that is that is that just feel like something that you? I, obviously, you probably didn't have it in high school and college, given oh, no. that was years ago. So, what yeah. is that? What is that like to have that immediate well, it interaction? It used to be just the newspaper. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you had to wait a day. Um, no, it's great. You know, I when we had the uh, Serbia series here, we had so many tweets or this that, or the other and. You know, it's great to see young fans. People were posting videos. I have one of my favorite videos ever. Um, I should retweet it actually th today, so if anybody wants to see it. But it's a it's a young fan in San Diego, and it was like I did I grew, scored a goal out of center, and he was watching it, and he turned around and smiled at the camera, and it was the <laughs> coolest thing. You know, it was like this little kid just saw me score. So yeah. And uh, you know, who knows what that meant to him, but you know, it meant a lot to me. So it was really cool to see your fans' interaction firsthand, and uh, you know, uh, world champs. You know, so many people were following us at home, and, and you know, you guys have done a great job getting our game, keeping our games accessible. So, you know, it's been huge. I think it's it's the way you know we're growing. Uh, Olympic Games coming up next summer. You've accomplished one of the big tasks of qualifying. I'm sure that's a huge relief. When you look towards Rio in 2016, what kind of comes to mind? Do you do you think the first game? Are you thinking overall podium? Where's your mind at when you think Olympics? I'm thinking in gold medal. So. I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm talking with the older guys, and you know, obviously we've been on some good teams before. I think we, you know, we should have, you know, we were favored to medal last time, uh, and it didn't work out. And so we know that quality. We know quality team. You know, we we've been on quality teams before, and I think we, you know, the as an older group, we can all. There's four of us now. We can all agree that there's something special about this group. Dan's special, um, you know, and he, he's, you know brought these guys, al uh, myself included, along in, gr in growth tremendously. So, um, you know, I don't think there's any reason why, you know, I think the world knows that we're coming and uh, we have such a great amount of time right now to prepare. And um, yeah, I think there's no reason that we can't be on a podium. So you get an opportunity to take another step on this road to Rio, as they're calling it, Thursday night and then Sunday up at USC, 2 o'clock start. We'll have Thursday night's game right here with John Mann and Team USA. John, thanks so much for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, John Mann, Center for Team USA. You can catch him Thursday. We're going to get to a commercial break right now, but don't forget you can watch John tomorrow night. Students, $10, high school and under, bring your ID. Come on out, cheer on the USA Women with Maddie Musselman, Team USA Men with John Mann. We'll take a break. Back after this counterattack live from CDM. You never know where the next Olympian might be coming from. 
but it could be water polo. And that starts with Splash Ball. Splash Ball is a program for children ages 5 through 9 designed to introduce them to the sport of water polo while promoting water safety. Improve swimming skills and learn a sport you'll love for a lifetime. For more information, visit SplashBallUSA.org. And welcome back. Greg Meskel here with you on the counterattack live from Corona Del Mar High School and the Holiday Cup. Thanks to our guests, Maddie Musselman, Team USA Women, Kevin Ricks, head coach of Corona Del Mar Girls Water Polo, and John Mann, Team USA Men's Center. All three of them connected, of course, right here to CDM. Maddie and John both playing their high school water polo here. Don't forget more Holiday Cup action coming up here tonight, 6 p.m. and 7.30 right here live on USA Water Polo TV. Also, all the games archived this week on YouTube.com slash USAWP. Even this very episode will be archived right there for our weekly counterattack. Don't forget to use the hashtag counterattack and hashtag water polo Wednesday. Right now, we're going to get into our closing segment as we do every week, our social media send-off. It's the best of what's going on water polo-wise on the Internet. And here it is for this week, our social media send-off. And now we jump right into our social media send-off. USA Netherlands this past Sunday in Manhattan Beach. Ashley Johnson meeting with the young fans. This comes from the Dave W. Comedy account. You may know Dave from our The Funny Thing About Water Polo in Skip Shot magazine. Thanks for sharing. Then to the holiday camp, LV underscore two tree sharing on Twitter. Holiday camp, always a great event at the home of Team USA in Colorado Springs. From there, we go to Tony Azevedo on Instagram and our friends at Mikasa making a Tony Azevedo ball. That's pretty cool. You know you've made it when you have a water polo ball with your name on it. Nice job, Tony. Back to Colorado Springs. Stu Sheldon having a good time here. These guys are, quote, unquote, sprinting off to training. You see a lot of fun stuff at the Olympic Training Center. Team USA on the men's side, they ventured to Tokyo to take on Japan. They were one goal winners in Tokyo in front of a sellout crowd. And while they were there, they got the chance to meet the U.S. Ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy, a great moment there for Team USA, and we appreciate her tweeting at us via her Caroline Kennedy Twitter account. So there you have it, the best this week in water polo on social media. Don't forget, we want to share what you're sharing on the Internet, so use the hashtag counterattack. Hit us up via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at USAWP. You know the deal. Respond to our Snapchats. There's no reason you can't get us some great content here. Coming up the next couple of weeks, a couple of special themed episodes. Next week, our holiday-themed episode, where we take a deep dive in all of our fun videos with the USA Women's National Team. And then two weeks from now, we'll have our year-end special going over the year that was in the counterattack. So some great stuff on the way. But that is going to put a wrap on this episode of the counterattack. Again, thank you to our guests and our hosts here at Corinne Zalmar High School. We're coming right back with live water polo action at 6 p.m. tonight on night two of the Holiday Cup. Don't forget, tomorrow night, $10 admission, high school ID, and younger. You also get a free rally towel if you're the first 200 fans here at CDM for a great doubleheader, USA Women, followed by the USA Men. Come cheer on Team USA. That'll do it for this week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, when you're on the counterattack, look weak side.